Right, we've got one minute to go. Let me just check everybody knows what they're doing. Owen, you're... The sound man, man. <laughs> right. And Alice, you're... Alice. Uh, doing what? I'm just kneeling here. Uh, yes, you're manning the phones, the aren't phones. you, Alice? And you two are... We're your potty. Yes. <laughs> now, what does it mean when that red light's on? You're a prostitute. <laughs> We're on air. What? Bloody hell. <laughs> what are you doing? What? But you said we're on air. Not now. Oh, sorry. <sighs> now! Three, two, one. <laughs> this is the first time I've noticed it. The vicar's got a very nice arse. <laughs> And welcome to Review Dibley. I'm Geraldine Granger, and I'm inviting oh, you to... Oh, sorry about that, Vicar. All right, Jim. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to mention your arse on the radio. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let's kick off with the phone-in, where you'll have your chance to tell me... When do you your want the jingle, Vicar? No, you've missed it already. I mean. Bugger. You... <laughs> It'll be your chance to ring in with your memories of Dibley. Bugger, bugger, when... bugger, 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 on 5216. Share with us your magical memories. What? <laughs> memories of some of the big events that have happened in Dibley. Doesn't even have to be interesting, frankly. <laughs> um, perhaps... Oh, I don't know, first time you saw a dog? <laughs> or any recent tummy aches? In fact, no, not you. <laughs> We're eager to share them with you. So please do... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, God. I think we have a caller on line one. Hello, caller. Vicar, is that you? It is indeed. Is that David Horton, local councillor, chairman of the parish? You know bloody well who it is. <laughs> I'm ringing up about this interview tomorrow. David, I feel I should warn you we are I'm actually... I'm cancelling. On... I'm sorry. I don't want that Alice moron asking me damn fool questions. David. And it's no good telling me that you'll get someone else because, frankly, they're all zombies. Frank knew it, Jim. I've got sheep who do a more probing interview. <laughs> Be really to a man. Have to cancel. Talk to you later. Uh, David, just before you go, just between you and me, how are your hemorrhoids? <laughs> well, they're terrible, if you must know. Oh, really painful. Very embarrassing. A little bit like a bunch of grapes hanging out your bottom. Yes. Well, it is, actually. My laboratory hasn't known what's hit it in the last few weeks. Oh. Oh. Well, thank you, David Hemorrhoid Horton, for sharing that with us live on the Dibley Radio phone-in. Anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> And this is Rory Bremner now, using my real voice. <laughs> Bet I had you all fooled, eh? <laughs> Zombies, he's got a nerve. No, 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 no. That's right. I'm, I'm not going to watch his show anymore. Nor me. Bloody Bremner. <laughs> Fear not, my little moron. Three, two, one. You're on. Hello, and welcome to our final special programme, Brain of Dibley. Tune in to Dibley Radio for fun with a holy lady -o. <laughs> Our contestants tonight are the reigning champion, Councillor David Horton, MBE, MA, FRCS, and the challenger, Miss Alice Tinker, GCSE, PMT, TTFN. <laughs> quiz has a local flavour. So, let's kick off. And fingers on buttons. That's the button <laughs> on the table, Alice. <clears throat> Question one for ten points. Who lives in Dibley Manor House? I do. Oh, sorry, David, hadn't quite finished the question there. Five-point penalty, I'm afraid. Hugo, if you will. So that's over to Alice now. Who lives in Dibley Manor House with David Horton? Uh. 
Hugo Horton. Correct! <laughs> and question two. Which famous singer once opened the Dibley face? Kylie Minogue. Oh, sorry, David, it's a two-part question. <laughs> Another five-point penalty. I'm afraid they're for you. So, Alice, which famous singer opened the Dibley fate and which Dibley resident is her biggest fan? It's Kylie Minogue mm. and, and Hugo Horton. Yes! <laughs> this is surprising. Thought you'd be doing better than this, David. <laughs> I do hope your hemorrhoids aren't affecting your performance, Cancer. <laughs> and now, questions about the Tinker family. Oh, my God. For ten points, which Tinker was commonly known as Donkey Bonker? <laughs> and so to our final scores tonight. Councillor David Horton has clawed his way back up to nil... <laughs> That's nil. <laughs> While Miss Alice Tinker has 245 points. <laughs> so, the incontrovertible winner of this year's Brain of Dibley is Miss Alice Tinker. <laughs> and I think it would be just lovely if the runner-up, just to show there's no hard feelings, were to present the cup to the winner. <laughs> um... Yes, all right. There we go. Thank you very much. With a word of congratulation. Uh, yes, all right. Congratulations on your victory. Okay. <laughs> and now you can kiss her. <laughs> Properly, please remember this is radio and our listeners will want to hear it. <laughs> Oh, Kathleen. <laughs> Bravo. And the winner of the broadcasting prize is, of course, our resident cool dude, Mr. Hugo Hot Dog Horton. <laughs> and on that happy note, it's farewell from Radio Dibley. Hit it, knew it. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. That's all right. No, I'm done. Wait a minute. Wait a cotton-picking, tutu-wearing minute here. <laughs> it's Darcy Bustle, isn't it? That's right. <gasps> this is very, very exciting. It's Darcy Bustle. Plie, plie, bun, plie. <laughs> You really are just my most favourite dancer in the entire world. Oh, thank you. I actually very nearly became a ballerina myself. You can probably tell by my décolletage. Just my ballet teacher said that, unfortunately, my ankle's a little bit too bendy. <laughs> oh, there's thousands of us in the church who all started off as dancers. Terry Waite, for example. <laughs> yeah. Spent the first 20 years of his life in pink tights. <laughs> This is Alice, by the way. Ignore her. So, Darcy Bustle, what are you doing here? I've been doing pause for thought. Oh, yeah, I just heard it in the car. It was brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, if there's ever anything I can do in getting the nursery, please count me in. You're sickening, aren't you, Darcy? I mean, not only the best dancer in the universe, but you've got a lovely personality as well. You don't mind me calling you Darcy? No, no, not at all. And you can call me De Geraldine, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, could I have your autograph? What? I heard you and Terry and I thought you were absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, um, I suppose I'll have to get used to this sort of thing. <laughs> Price of fame, eh? Hold mm. <laughs> for a sec, Carol. I'm just getting Alison Moyer's autograph. <laughs> Actually, she's not. Shut it! <laughs> Alison Moy. You, you wouldn't just sing a song for me, would you? <laughs> not today. I've completely lost my voice, you see. <laughs> Item two, Jim. Mm? Yes, uh, I'd like to congratulate the vicar 
on her performance on Pause for Thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and any questions. Yeah. And calm down. <laughs> and Noel's house party. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Well, actually, Noel wants to turn Find the Vicar's Knickers into a regular slot. Amazing. <laughs> Let's move on to the gala. Any progress there? <clears throat> or is the climax of our show still Owen and his amazing farting duck? <laughs> <laughs> and what news on tickets, Frank? Well, I won't mince my words, but tickets aren't going too well. Oh, not sold out? Not sold any. <laughs> but don't panic, it could be worse. What's worse than not selling any tickets at all? Well, selling one ticket. <laughs> but selling it to a serial killer. <laughs> no, 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 that's right. Who comes on the stage and slits all our throats <laughs> and then leaves us all in a great pool of blood. <laughs> Does anyone actually have this serial killer's address? <laughs> Everybody rev to the rescue as usual. As it happens, I'm doing rather an important spread for one of the Sunday papes tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll mention our little show and we'll get loads of peeps in after that. Oh, oh, bravo, holy oh, hero. I thought you said no more media. Yes, I did, and this is positively my last. Apart from the photo shoot for Vogue. <laughs> and Loaded. <laughs> and What Car. Oh, God. I forgot to put my makeup on. Oh, hell. Who cares? It's the woman inside that counts, isn't it, Ali Pally? Every time, Vic Stick. Girl power. <laughs> Geraldine, I'd like you to meet someone. This is my little brother, Simon. Oh, oh. <laughs> excuse me, just, um, one of the <laughs> Yes, I know. I've heard you on the radio. It's very amusing. Uh, was I? Was I? A uh, very funny story about the choir boy and the cucumber. Oh, thanks. So, you're the prodigal brother. In what way, prodigal? Uh, too much drink, too much sex, too little responsibility. <laughs> Oh, that's my kind of prodigal. <laughs> so, here we are, total strangers, trying to find out more about each other. So, just plucking a question, totally at random. Are you married? <laughs> no, my wife died six years ago. Good God, how awful. Yeah, well, it's uh, a long time now. Right, oh. so is there another special lady in your life at the moment? No, not at the moment. I bet you'd like one. <laughs> yes, I'd love one. Point me in the direction of a buxom blonde and I'd be out of that door like a bullet out of a great big gun. Blonde. Right, blonde. Well, I suppose blondes are valuable people too, aren't they? <laughs> I'm looking forward to the wedding rehearsal tomorrow. Oh, you're not coming to that, are you? Wild dinosaurs wouldn't keep me away. Oh. I'm very eager to see you in action, Vicar. Oh, please, just call me Geraldine. Hey, just call me Jerry. Actually, forget the ruddy vowels. Just call me Grr. <laughs> Grr it is. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Come on in. <laughs> what can I do for you this merry day? There's something I'd like to try out on you. <laughs> oi, oi. It's my best man's speech. <laughs> Nothing I'd like better. OK. Right, well, um, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the best man. <laughs> I would like to begin with a quotation from that great song of Abba's. No, 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 no knowing me. <laughs> No, 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 knowing you. I'm just going to get some water to drink, all right. I'll be in the kitchen, I'll still be listening. 
Right. No, 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 knowing me, no, 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 knowing you, uh-huh. If any person here knows of any just cause or impediment why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, let them speak now and forever hold their peace. I do. The groom is already married. He married me three years ago. And don't let him deny it. I've got the marriage certificate to prove it. Oh, sorry. Wrong church. <laughs> This ring, I be red. With this ring, I be red. With my body, I be worship. <laughs> Repeat after me. I. Alice Springs Tinker. Take thee, Hugo Horton. Take thee, Hugo Horton. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. For richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, till death us do part. Amen. Amen. In sickness and in hell. Yes, I have to. I know true love when I see it. And I saw it in this pair from the moment I arrived in Dibley. I also know true insanity. I think I've had a little glimpse of that too. <laughs> And so, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. No, no, Jim. You. It seems all right to me. What, for a vicar to go around having sex willy-nilly in front of her parishioners? Well, I shouldn't think it's a case of willy-nilly. Willy's got to be willing. <laughs> you can't do it with a willy that's nilly. Don't be serious, Owen. I am serious. On principle, I'm a great believer in sex before marriage. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had any sex at all. <laughs> And unfortunately, my memory is that Jesus was against it, which I think is a problem when we're talking about our vicar. Yes, but things were very different in his day. Women weren't emancipated, and they hadn't yet launched Minx magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hugo, I bet you and Alice were at it like rabbits before you were married. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, what did I tell you? Hugo. Yes, well, uh, we certainly ate a lot of carrots together. <laughs> Well, I'm still worried. There's something not right at all. And I mean, Simon's just not... Rubbish! As long as she's private about it, I think we should let her and Simon and their lovemaking be. OK. 
Okay. Although I wouldn't mind seeing a few Polaroids. <laughs> so, time for bed? Uh, let's have a coffee first. Okay, good idea. Perhaps some ice cream? Yes, please. What flavour? What have you got? You don't want to ask that question. Why? Because I just got myself a brand new freezer. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> What do you fancy? I'll just have that little one. Oh, well, please yourself. You get a nice little dinky plastic spoon with that one. Thanks. So happy you're here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerry, but uh, this just isn't working. Oh, I'll get you a proper spoon. No, uh, I don't mean the spoon. I meant us. You and me. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's, uh, unexpected. The thing is, uh, it's been fantastic, but uh, I think we've been taking things a little too fast. I feel we ought to apply the brakes for a second, if you get my meaning. Yes. Uh, I mean, you're speaking English, aren't you? And I understand English, so I don't think meaning's the problem. The thing is, there is, was, no, um, is another girl in Liverpool. Another girl? Yeah. We've been going through a lot of troubles. I thought it was definitely all off, but I've spoken to her a couple of times in the last week or so, and uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I think you do know. But you're a custard of the cowardy cowardy variety. I know, I'm sorry. Why don't we just say that that was the autumn that was? Let's see what winter brings. Yeah. Either that or get out of my house, you treacherous, gigantic, elongated bastard. <laughs> uh, but no. Probably the autumn wintry metaphor is much nicer. Much nicer for you. Hello, Vicar. Oh, hello, Frank. I'd like to audition for one of the wise men. Oh, right, lovely, right. Well, here's the script. Yes. I'll read in the other wise men for you, shall I? Right, yes. All right. <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. Lo, behold, a wondrous star in the east. Let us follow it, <laughs> my noble companion. <laughs> right? Perchance we will encounter the Son of God. Then we will <laughs> worship him. Interesting interpretation, Frank. Can't say I quite understand the voice. <laughs> well, I was just thinking. I'm playing a wise man. Now, who's wise? And I thought, of course, Stephen Hawking. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, the voice. <laughs> Take this mirror. <laughs> it's very nice. Well, I can see you've really thought about this, Frank. <laughs> More's the pity. Um, <laughs> you about it. It's very good, though. Thank you. <laughs> right, who's next? It's Owen. Excellent. Can you send him in? Yes. Owen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Owen. <laughs> uh, and, um... You've come to audition for... The King. Of course, there were three kings, and you are obviously one of them. That's right. <laughs> and will you be giving us an Elvis impression on the night? Well, it would be mad to dress up as him and then not lay down some serious rock and rolling. <laughs> are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me? Tonight. Can I get back 
to you on it. Just store that performance and come back to you. Certainly. All right. Would it help if I slept with you? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, I've heard you can get on in acting by sleeping with a director on a couch. <laughs> and I, for one, would be only too happy to oblige. Um, no. <laughs> Who's next? It's Jim. He's come as one of the kings as well. Oh, right. Well, I hope it isn't Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> He says he'll come back later. So, how can I help you two? We'd like to play Mary and Joseph. <laughs> With me as Mary. Oh, God. Oh, good! <laughs> Though, actually, Alice, I actually was banking on you for the pivotal role of woman who sleeps through the entire thing in another room at the inn. Oh. Well, that would be nice too, but I want to play Mary. <laughs> it's just that, oh dear, what a shame. You don't actually fit the vital requirements, I'm afraid. For instance, Joseph was a carpenter, and I'm afraid Hugo just isn't, is he? <laughs> just finished them in evening class. Right. And so it was that the three wise men who looked remarkably like the shepherds, but who were in fact completely different people, approached the stable, riding camels, or at least doing very good camel riding impressions. <laughs> and as they came unto the manger, they saw Mary, who was extremely great with child and looking rather hot. <laughs> And in the company of only some Catherine and her husband, Joseph. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus, she's having a baby. No, the line is, she's having a baby. Jesus. No, really, she is actually having a baby. Come oh. look. <laughs> Uh, Excuse me, just one second. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing? We've got them in the palm of our hands. Oh, oh, God. oh my God. We must have some towels. Owen, run up to the house and get some towels. I haven't got any. Well, no towels? Well, why would I have towels? To dry yourself after a bath. I don't have a bath. <laughs> would anyone here have some towels? I suppose you could use these. My entire costume is made of towels. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. no Would you excuse us just one moment? Actually, is there a doctor in the house? I'm a vet. You'll do. Could you come and help? <laughs> My dead body? I'm not having a grandchild of mine brought into the world by James Harriet. I mean, come on, it's common sense, sure. Oh, dear, oh dear. Are you sure it's a good idea having Herod take care of Jesus? He's not Herod now. He's Mr. Horton. Oh, he is. Come on, little one. Push. Push. Oh, Gerald, come on, give us a hand. Uh, right, Alice, breathe. Oh, well, it hurts. Does it? Is it? Well, next time you get a contraction, you just hang on to my hand really tight, OK? Grip it. Okay. Tight as you like. It's coming. OK? OK. Here it comes. OK. Here it comes. OK. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ow, you bitch. <laughs> We are the three wise men. No, 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 we are the kings. Oh, right. And most kings are brain dead in bread crittings. Oh. Well, deep breathing. Deep, deeper. That's it. Oh. Good. Go oh. Oh, here's Hugo. Here's Hugo. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. There we are. Just, just one more push now. Oh, my God, I can see the head. Oh, God, I hope that is a head. <laughs> It's very realistic, isn't it? It's coming. It's 
It's coming. Finally. One, two, three. truth is, all this nonsense aside, I love you. All right, then. Gonna be my mother in law. <laughs> and baby Geraldine's granny. <laughs> Good luck, granny. together in the sight of the Lord to witness the marriage of this man to this woman! <laughs> Do you, Bodicea Geraldine Granger? Did he say Bodicea? Take this man, David Francis Matthew Horton, to be your lawful wedded husband. Um. <laughs> um. Um. No! Don't do it, Geraldine. It's me you love, not him. <laughs> point for the officiating priest to go on and on about the purpose of baptism. But I don't like to think of myself as an ordinary clergyman! <laughs> Fair dues. So, if you'd like to hand it over, we can all get back to David's house for some of that genuinely disgusting sherry. Very <laughs> good. Oh, <laughs> Oh, um, just one moment. I wasn't quite sure how deep you'd be popping her in, so I thought I'd take proper precautions. Uh, uh, Geraldine. Lala. <laughs> Granny. Ainsley Harriet! <laughs> I 
baptize thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Let us all give thanks to Almighty God and pray in silence for the truly wondrous deed that we have done here today. Now, total silence, please. Who art in heaven? <laughs> Tiny little fingers. Excellent. <laughs> she will always have God's love. But let us pray that she may one day find something which, in my long experience, has been much harder to find. Sane clergyman. <laughs> no. The true love of another person. One Geraldine to another, I wish you health and happiness and bosoms the size of basketballs. <laughs> you don't need luck because you got that already. You've been born to two of the sweetest parents that God ever made. I'd just like you to accept a little token of my affection. Oh, Frank, you are kind. These are handwritten copies that I made of the minutes of the last 30 years Ooh. of council meetings. I assure you, it's gripping stuff. First, I'm sure we'd all like to thank Mr. Badcock for coming, and I'm sure Mr. Newitt didn't mean to spit at you on your arrival. Sorry. Also, I hope you didn't find the burning effigy of your boss too disconcerting. Thank you. Naturally, we apologise for the water shortage. Yes. As you can see from this model, you live in an area of high population growth. And so traditional water supplies are fast becoming inadequate. Do, 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 do. I, I recognise that little house. Oh. <laughs> that's where I headed off this morning. <laughs> and that's where my gran was murdered. We hid her body under the floorboards. If we could we just... still smell her when the wind's in the right direction. <laughs> the long and the short of it is, I'm pleased to say that we found a solution which should ensure plentiful water for the next century in the form of a new... Reservoir. Well, oh, yeah. It's probably easiest to show you what I'm talking about in a simple demonstration. <laughs> oh my God! We're all going to drown. I've been sitting at home watching Scooby-Doo and then suddenly this massive bucket of water is going to flood the village. You can't do that. Well, we have planning permission and government backing. The plans have been available for you to look at for months. Where? In a cupboard. In our basement. In the Hong Kong office. <laughs> Naturally, all detailed objections will be considered, provided they're registered by, a, well, lunchtime today. No! Just you wait. We're going to fight you all the way on this. So be it, dear lady. Work begins in one month, and I can assure you we are very determined and we'll be ready for anything you throw at us. <laughs> oh! He wasn't ready for that. So how's the oh. petition going, everyone? We need 10,000 signatures by next week. Here's a start. Right. Best wishes, Harold Macmillan. <laughs> Not what I had in mind, Hugo. Got Benny Hill as well. Uh, no, Hugo, I need signatures of living people. No, 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 no. Um, uh, I've got 500 this afternoon. That's fantastic, Jim. <laughs> All opposed to the reservoir. No, 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 no. They, they, they didn't give a toss for the reservoir, but uh, I asked them to sign if they thought Claudia Schiffer should get her tits out more often. <laughs> Right. 
I see you've managed to sign it ten times, Owen. It's a cause I feel very passionately about. <laughs> Vicar, much as I applaud your efforts, I fear we have to accept the compensation the water company offer us, however derisory that is. <sighs> I thought they offered you four million pounds. What? Four million pounds? Yes, well, um, uh, do you think I'm happy about that? Well, you were dancing around the rose garden singing. Hugo. Money, money, money. <laughs> You treacherous git. You'd sacrifice this village for your own personal greed. Have you no respect for tradition? Well said, Owen. For centuries, my family's been massacring deer, staging cockfights and gassing foxes in this valley, and we don't intend stopping now. Less well said, Owen. <laughs> Incidentally, this is what you'd be getting for your farm, by the way. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> Dave, Dibley's a dump. For goodness sakes, Owen. There are people here who don't own their own properties. You know, they won't get any compensation at all. We're Sodom. <laughs> now will you sleep with me? I can pay you big time, babe. Actually, sorry, Jim, do you think you could take over? Uh, Quickly, now, please. You've got a key, haven't you? There we are. Comfy? No bad. I normally have the handcuffs a bit tighter, but... <laughs> Sorry, what do you mean, normally? Well, I have this Chinese girl... All right, got the picture, got the picture! <laughs> and finally, news is reaching us of a most unusual demonstration in the village of Dibley. <gasps> At last! We've all heard of people chaining themselves to trees and railings, but what about a church? Yes! I'm here with demonstrator Jim Trott. No! Mr Trott, can you tell me why you're chained to the church? D no, no. <laughs> yes, because the vicar's gone to the toilet. Too much detail. You should talk to her. She's a wonderful woman. Lovely ass. <laughs> I will kill him. <laughs> and Dibley's MP today spoke out in the House of Commons. Show me the way to go home, he said, before falling over. <laughs> and before we go, a look at tomorrow morning's front pages. The star has thou shalt not kill my village about the vicar who's chained herself to her church. The independent leads on the same story. Vicar has big reservations over reservoir. And the sun has its own angle. The sun asks, is the vicar's ass really lovely? <laughs> As if we care. That's all from Newsnight for tonight. We'll be back with more tomorrow night. <laughs>
hanging on the wall. And if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'd be 99,999 green bottles.